All right, so full disclosure, I tried to do way too much today, but that's pretty typical for me. So I got the roof done yesterday, but I haven't routed out the holes um, for the vents yet. So that's what I'm going to be doing right here. Um, I've got several holes. I've got two fans um, and then actually one is a fan. One is just a regular vent. And then I have the hole for the AC unit. I also have the hole for the fridge that I forgot to film. Whoops. And then um, the shower skylight right there. Um, so this is just a router with a flush trim bit and I drilled a pilot hole in it. Makes life super, super easy. Um, I don't even bother to try to like cut this out beforehand because it is too much work and too much effort to be honest with you. And it's not worth it if it doesn't go right. So this gets a perfect cut every time. So I don't know why I would do anything differently. This is the hole for the antenna, so I kind of just drilled a hole from the ceiling and then went up to the roof and finished the hole. That way I didn't have any like burrs or anything. Um, and then uh, this didn't work like I thought it would. There's the antenna cord that comes out right there. And I was hoping that if I put enough pressure on my hole saw, I could use it without the bit, but that didn't really happen. Um, I didn't want to stick the bit in there too much because I was afraid I would mess up the cord, but it's fine. I got it. Now, last but not least, I need to router out the skylight for the shower. I actually moved this skylight because I'm going to change up the shower. It was one of those like ugly corner showers, so I changed the vent. And I'm going to make it a really big shower. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have routed this out before I put the whole ceiling down, but this was kind of an afterthought, so I'm just going to have to be messy from now on. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's okay. It is what it is. It just looks like I have dandruff now. So I guess people probably expect that from me. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so I have uh, my compressor, my air compressor turned on. And I'm just blowing off all of the sawdust and anything else that's yucky up here. Um, so just clean the roof off really well. And then I can bring the new roof skin up. Woohoo! Can't believe we're already at this point. Now I started the front of the camper. As you see, it's rolled up. They do come boxed. And so I do recommend rolling it and not trying to like put it out here while it's boxed up. I like to leave a lot of extra room at the front because I want it to hang over. Um, and then I will roll this entire skin out um, just to make sure that it's straight, that I have enough room on the front, that I have enough room on the sides, that I have enough room on the back. Um, and as you can see, the AC unit's right there, but I can clearly see that I have plenty of room left over on the back. So I'm just going to go with it. Okay. So now what I'm doing at the front of the camper is I'm rolling it back up. So now that I know that the entire roof skin is laid out, it's where I want it to be. I start at the front half and I'm going to roll it up to about halfway. Why do I do that? That's a great question. That is because when I put on these roof skins, I only work on half a roof at a time. It makes life a whole lot easier. Um, and you'll see when I do it here in just a second, um, it, it just makes it easier. It makes less air bubbles, in my opinion, when you work only half a roof at a time versus you're trying to like stand on the other side of the roof. And I don't know, it just makes a big mess. So this is how I've just done it over the years. And that's just is what it is it works good for me by the way if you're curious i get this roof uh kit at rec pro um and i do have a coupon code if you want five percent off um but anything helps so this is just a um it's a pvc roof and i like these a lot better because they have a 10-year warranty um, you never have to reseal them or recoat them um and I, I just, I think they go on a lot easier than the rubber roofs or the, I guess, typical TPO roofs, whatever you want to call them. Anyway, this is just what I've used and I, I really like it. Plus, if you like hit a tree branch or something, you can actually save the extra skin and you can make yourself a patch. Um, and then that patch is just as waterproof as if you have a new skin. So there's lots of advantages to using a PVC roof versus just a traditional um, RV roof skin. Anyway, now you're seeing the method to my madness. So I roll out, you know, I don't know, a foot and a half at a time. And then I pretty much just roll that skin over one by one. And as I do that, I'm using my hands to smooth out the skin. Also, if you saw my neighbor walk up right there, she was bringing me coffee. She owns Cruising for a Bruising. Y'all need to look her up. The coffee is delicious, literally the best, and I love her. So she gave me some extra fuel for the day. Anyway, um, so this is just me smoothing out some extra air bubbles. This is just like a squeegee. It works okay. 
Um, it really does work better if you smooth them out as you go versus trying to like go back like that. Um, but you can always kind of smooth out air bubbles towards the vents or towards the um, edges of the camper and they'll kind of smooth out pretty good. Some air bubbles is fine um, because this roof, it will shrink a little bit once it sits in the sun. Um, so I guess just do the best you can and get as least bubbles as possible and it's still going to be better than it was before. So the front's a little trickier because um, you have that front cap right there and then I actually I step on the other side of the roof skin and if you do that it will um, kind of make little I don't know spots where like your knees or your feet have been. So you just got to be really careful. You'll see me sit down here in a little bit because it's less of a footprint when I sit down versus if I have all my weight on like one spot. So I'm just kind of smoothing everything out. Um, and then once I've done that section, I can go to the back section and I will roll this entire thing up uh, basically to the point that I have already put the glue down on the other side, which is right about there. So same idea for the back side. Um, and by the way, this is just a regular paint roller. There's literally nothing special about it. Um, and I found it's a whole lot easier to do it um, on one of the longer sticks versus having to bend over all the time. Um, and when you buy this roof kit, it actually comes with the membrane, it comes with the glue, it comes with butyl tape, and it comes with self-leveling sealant. So it does come with everything that you would need to redo your entire roof when you buy the kit. I always like to buy the kit because you'll need everything, so you might as well save some money and just buy it all in the kit versus trying to get everything separate. Now I will say, um, watch where your feet are and watch where you uh, put your body because you don't want to accidentally fall through one of these vents. I have yet to fall through a vent, um, but you know, of course, now that I say that, the next camper I do this on is going to be the one that I fall through. But I guess in all retrospect, it's not really that far to fall, so could be worse, right? Anyway, um, so just keep going. Now I need to move this AC so I can um, do the rest of the roof. And I just had a spare piece of foam board right there that I just set it on top of. I didn't want to take the chance of it putting too much weight in one spot and crinkling it or ripping the skin that I just worked so hard to put on. So anyway, that's just why I put the foam board there. Just seemed like a safer option to me. Distribute the weight a little bit. Um, but now I'm on the other side of this skin. Um, obviously because if I walked any further, I would walk off the roof and we don't want that. Um, again, just be careful where you lay and what you do, uh, especially with these back parts because there's a lot of, there's two vents right there. Um, and it gets really hard to see once you actually put the skin on. So just keep smoothing it out. That's what I'm doing right here. Um, get as many air bubbles out as you can. And, um, yeah. Oh, this is a very important step. Um, in the back, I have a roof vent right there. So I just got a razor blade and cut around it. That way the skin can lay flat on there. Um, I'll also get a Sharpie and write a giant X where your vents are. That way you don't accidentally step on them. Now this is the part where I said I was trying to do entirely too much today because I could have stopped at the roof skin, but then I was like, you know what? I can't put this front cap down until I repair it anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. <sighs> I don't know why I did that because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. And this camper is way too big to fit in my shop. But that's all right. I'm going with it. So I'm taking this entire front cap off because it's severely damaged and there's literally nothing holding it together. So I take the side pieces off. There's a front piece right there um, that was attached to that diamond plate. So that front piece came off. And basically I'm going to take everything off. All of it. So these are just square head screws. I will replace them with a different type of screw just because when square heads get rotten, I don't like how hard it is to take off. So I replace them with something a little different, which I'll tell you all about once I start the process of rebuilding it. Um, but this is me still taking off screws because there's literally a million screws on these strips. Um, I will end up reusing these, so try not to bend them just like the stuff on the front. If you also see, I took off those lights. Um, there's three lights here. Those will all have to come off. Um, as you can see, I, I couldn't get the thing out, so I just hit it with my screw with my drill and busted the light, and then I could take it out. Clip the wires and pretty much just start taking it piece by piece now that everything's free. 
So once all the screws are out, these side pieces should come off very easily. Um, don't try to pull them or bend them because you want to keep the shape. Um, there's also one trim piece here that is underneath um, that I didn't see. So I'm just taking the screws off underneath. Um, and then uh, this whole front cap will basically come off after that. So it's kind of crazy that the only thing holding this front piece on is some trim pieces, but I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should have a talk with RV manufacturers about how they build these things. All right. So I'm kind of just wiggling everything loose to make sure there's nothing else attached on here before I take this whole piece off. Um, as you can see, the whole front cap just kind of slid. It's stapled in a little bit. So I'm just loosening the staples. Oh, I almost fell right there. Um, and then the whole thing just slides off like that. I'm trying to like roll it up into one piece and throw it to the side. And then this part right here, this diamond plate will come loose eventually. It was kind of stuck on the bottom piece for whatever reason. There's like some wood framing right there, but I eventually got it. So yeah, now we have the whole front cap exposed. Yay! Now, this is just me cleaning up the studs right here. There's some extra wood, like dry rotted wood that was on it. Um, and then I will end up taking off all of the screws and the staples that are in there and kind of work with a clean slate. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of investigating because I saw there was a little bit of water damage to this side right here. Um, so, of course, because I mean I'm ridiculous, I decided to go ahead and fix that as well. Now for the side piece, it seems like a lot to take the whole thing off. So I'm going to use some epoxy. Um, I do have this linked in my Amazon storefront. This is a one-to-one -one ratio right here. Um, and then I pretty much just mix it up, suck it up in a syringe that I attach a long tube to and kind of shove it in the wall of the camper. Um, works really, really good for kind of adhering those like really small, um, I guess, whatever, like delamination sections where it's not like everything's rotten, it just came apart a little bit. So this is me right here, I have a syringe, I have all this linked to my Amazon storefront and if you want a better video of this, I've got one on my channel already um, and I can link that in the description too. But I pretty much just shove it down in there. Um, this is marine grade epoxy, so it's gonna work really well for binding everything together. Now after that, I get a scrap piece of plywood that I have right here and I have these deep throat clamps that come in handy when I'm repairing something like this. Um, so I go ahead and clamp it on there with the gigantic clamps that I have. Um, I think I put three clamps on here and then I'll, I ended up putting another piece at the bottom right there which I forgot to film. But I will leave that there probably overnight until that epoxy cures and then I can take it off and try to finish putting that front cap back on. Now while I'm waiting for that to dry I can start working on this front cap. Um, I'm just taking all of this extra like material that was still left on it. Most of this is already basically down to the bare minimum. I mean like this, it's, I think this is actually like a piece of plastic. It's definitely not fiberglass. Um, so I'm going to try something different than I did last time. Um, so I'm just going to kind of scrape away as much of this like cardboard residue as I can. I guess technically when I was already scraping, I was thinking about, hmm, I probably could just like get this wet and then scrape it off. But that seemed like a lot and honestly I didn't have the time for it so I'm just going to scrape everything off the best that I can to make sure there's no big flakes um, and go from there. So I'm also trying to take some advice and not bend over so much which is why I'm sitting on this thing. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my gosh I can't believe she's standing on that. Well I was really careful with the first front cap that I ever did and then uh, I realized how sturdy it actually was and I was like, yeah, I probably don't need to be careful with that anymore. It's fine. Worst comes to worst, if it cracks, then it probably needed to be replaced anyway. Now this is that something different that I was telling you about because the last time I repaired a front cap, I used that marine grade epoxy and I basically just poured it all over two pieces of paneling and then stuck the front cap on top of it, which it worked fine. Um, but my only complaint was is that that epoxy isn't really flexible and so it was really hard to bend. I should have made like relief cuts in it, but it's okay. I got it on there. It is what it is. You can learn from something the second time around and just do it differently. So I'm going to try something different. 
Now this is still two pieces of paneling, but this is actually contact cement that I put in. Um, this is just a paint roller. I'm rolling it on. Um, so I use, that is um, one of the small cans. Um, and then I got my front cap and then I stuck it on there. You will need two full sheets of um, this paneling right here. And this is, it's funny, this is, it's actually a lot more like awkward to carry that than I thought it was going to be. But that's okay. It fits perfectly like that. Just make sure that the seams are lined up. Um, and then I just started stacking stuff on top. Now I'm doing this again because I realized after I had already stacked all the wood on top and was ready to let it sit that it's like the wood soaked up the contact cement. And so I'm putting another layer of contact cement on but I'm doing it half a section at a time in hopes that it won't like dry fully like it did last time. Um, so this is one of those like trial and error things you live and you learn. So I tried it, didn't work. So we came up with a different plan and so far it seems to be working pretty good. Um, so I'll do the same thing with this side, move my wood over and um, I must have not gone like completely halfway the first time because um, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stay back. So I had to use my little thing to keep the flat back, but pretty much same thing. I used another, um, one of those small cans for this again. And I think that actually did the trick, but I guess we will find out tomorrow morning if this worked or not. Um, if not, we're just going to go back to epoxy and cause I know that works and call it a day. I had some extra right here. So I was just kind of trying to put it anywhere that I could so I wouldn't waste it. Um, stacked everything back up and let it sit. So yeah, I guess we'll see what happens tomorrow.